Welcome to this video on learning outcomes. In this video, we'll define learning outcomes, look at some good versus bad ones, and identify some of their parts. First, a bit of a disclaimer. There is no consensus in higher education about the use and definitions of the terms learning outcomes and learning objectives. The Gwena Moss Center uses the term learning outcomes to describe what students should know, be able to do, or demonstrate at the end of a course. So that's the term used in this video. When writing a learning outcome, start with the question, what do the students need to be able to know or do when they finish the course? And continue to be able to know and do after the class is over. When writing learning outcomes, remember that you have to be able to observe, assess, and measure what you're asking your students to learn. The outcomes actually have to be relevant to the students. You should phrase them as, the student should be able to, or the student will be expected to, by the end of the class because the students have to do their part. When writing an outcome, be clear about what the students will need to learn and how you expect them to demonstrate this. Effective learning outcomes are what's called SMART. They should be specific, they should be measurable, so you want to, con to consider how it is you assess that learning. The students should be able to accomplish the task given the expected prior knowledge and experience and what they learn in this class. The outcome should be relevant to the course and to the students. The student should be able to accomplish this learning and demonstrate it in the way laid out in the outcome in the time frame available. Ineffective learning outcomes are intangible and poorly defined. They're usually overly broad and quite difficult to assess. They frequently don't clearly define what it means to actually master the material that's been covered and they're frequently too long and contain jargon that students might not understand. Let's look at these learning outcomes. Are they good or bad? In the first one, how specific is this? How will you measure that? And in the second one, what does exposed mean here? Could it just be that they'll see a list of the software or will they actually get a chance to use it? Outcomes really have three parts, the audience, the behavior, and the criteria. First, when writing your outcome, think of the audience. So who is this outcome aimed at? They really should be student-centered as opposed to instructor-centered. Let's look at this outcome. What's wrong with this? Well, this is instructor-centered. It's about what the instructor is going to do as opposed to what the students will be doing. The behavior part of an outcome is what do you expect the student to be able to do as a result of the learning? When writing the outcome, you should use action verbs to describe what observable behavior the students will need to do that you'll be assessing. So let's look at this outcome. What's wrong here? How will you assess this? What does appreciation mean? And finally, the criteria for a learning outcome. This states what the standard is for mastery. Does a student need to get 50% right, 75%, 90 Also, think about what constitutes a minimum acceptable performance. So is 50% enough, or does it have to be 100 And how will you assess this? So for example, will the students need to do it without error, 9 of 10 times, or within 60 seconds? Let's look at this learning outcome. Given two hula hoops, the student will be able to successfully demonstrate using them. Well, in this outcome, what does successfully mean? This is a list of some of the materials that were referred to in the making of this video. Thank you for taking the time to watch this.